I'm not sure how readable any of that is with the lights and everything else, but it's great to be here at short notice. And uh, sort of, this is how I ended up moving to a, from uh, Mac OS and Windows to a Linux system. And it all began with JetBrains. It began with, uh, I started with PHP Storm, then I started playing with Golang, and I got a license for Idea Ultimate, which basically gives you everything that IntelliJ has, no matter whether it's Java or Python or whatever, you've got access to all of it there, and the fantastic data grid for, for sort of databases, etc. And I basically started just living in my IDE. So I don't go away for a sort of... Uh, for a terminal and I don't go away for the database. I don't, uh, everything happens here. Um, so you can see I've got my, um, sorry, I'm in the wrong computer here. You can see I've got my um, databases here. Uh, I can examine it. Actually, this one is probably empty at the moment, so not much use, but at least there it would appear, all the stuff. And then here I have my, uh, my terminal. If I want to test uh, HTTP points, I use an HTTP client inside uh, my IDE, so I don't go to Postman unless I really need to. So everything stays here, which means that I've been gradually tailoring it and um, customizing it and putting in plugins that give me funky colors that I enjoy and uh, little brackets that change colors according to the shape, size and termination. So if I've got, you know, 10 nested brackets, I'm going to be able to spot the different colors and, and follow them. I've got, you know, I can hover and see all the git blame inside my, uh, the field. I don't know if this shows it. I have, yeah, you can see that. Uh, I, everything is happening here. Uh, I do my versioning here and if I want some, you know, Rarely I will want to use a sort of GUI for Git, but I don't go to Git Kraken or whatever. I go to sort of the nice version control here. Um, and I've got sort of my log with a nice little graph, etc. So everything is happening here. And this took quite a while. I haven't finished. Uh, every so often I kind of go, like, I'm not really happy with the tabs. I really want all the letters to be shiny. In my previous ID, I had it so that, you know, I'd have some color on sort of for the non-project files, some for the other, etc. So you can see I'm beginning to get into this. So from there I start going, okay, well, let me tailor my terminal. And, uh, and so I start playing with it and I create a bash script for it that I can't use now, and I'm trying still to translate it. But basically, I put... Uh, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, yeah. So I created a rather big script for my terminal command line. And I had my whole sort of color scheme, and basically, depending on error messages, it would look green or red. Um, and the cursor was a sort of rocking uh, symbol most of the time, but if there was an error, it would go like that. And I was happy with that. Um, and then I, I found out there was this thing called ZSH, which is a different kind of shell to Bash that gives you superpowers, especially if you connect them to uh, uh, an extension called Oh My ZSH. Oh My ZSH. Yes. Um, so I decided to move there, and I haven't yet managed to port what I did in Bash to this, but I did sort of use a slightly customized theme that was already there, and now my terminal uh, looks like uh, this. Um, I don't know if you can see it. So I have there my name nice and green, uh, with it's in two levels, you can see. Sort of one here, here's the actual cursor. I've got the date, the battery percentage, uh, where I am in my directory, and my git status. But the one my git status is not changing colors, so you know I'm I'm not happy here yet. Um, so I'm beginning. There, there's a concept that a fantastic old school programmer, a, a, a great of Lisp, who was one of the pioneers of uh, design patterns. His name was. Richard P. Gabriel had a, a fantastic obscure book 
And I think it's only obscure because it was so ahead of the game. It came around the same time as the Gang of War design patterns, etc. And his, uh, he had this concept about habitability, that you should design your code in a way that you want to live in it, that you're comfortable in, that it's your home, and that makes you more productive. So this has become a very habitable space for me. I'm kind of moving in. But of course, after a while of doing this, you start kind of going back to your operating system and, you know, it, it kind of looks like Windows, so it looks like Mac. And you like certain things about it, but you like certain things about the other, and you're not so sure. So you, you, you get that, that bug, and I had never had any interest in actually moving into Linux, but by the end of it, I just, you know, I just couldn't settle. I had to tweak. I had to change. So, um, oh yeah, and one of the nice things is um, with uh, oh my ZSH, so I'll tell you what kind of plugins I have. To, um, to power up my terminal. Um, yeah. So I have completions for AWS on the command line. Uh, AutoJump memorizes everything you do. So every time you use a command, if I start typing any letter, uh, it remembers that I typed, you can't see it there, uh, rm php unit dot xml so any command i've used begins to appear and i can sort of move it and it suddenly becomes real etc and it learns as i use it so it's it becomes really productive then uh colorize so i have uh connected with uh syntax highlighting so for example if i just write r there is uh it's red because it doesn't mean anything but the moment i put an m it becomes green because now it's a command. So I've got syntax highlighting on anything, um, and it, it gets sort of quite rich and, and quite complex. Uh, I also have nice thing like weather, Cardiff. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, oh yeah, it's a... Uh, well, this actually brings me to my aliases. So, uh, This weather. Uh, it's because I'm not connected to the internet, that's why. So otherwise it would give me an extremely pretty uh, set of conditions, humidity outside, the sun kind, sunrise, etc. So uh, that was the next thing I started doing was aliases. And uh, I I created a whole bunch of shortcuts. I'll tell you just some of the ones that are really handy. One is, once you start adding aliases, you start forgetting aliases. So I created a file which is a grep of aliases. So I just have to say git, and it will tell me if I put files git, it tells me all the aliases that I've got for git. And if, you know, I know it had something to do with whether, it doesn't, I can even just use partial words. So if I files, and there it is, my, all my weather aliases, etc. So that's quite handy. Then I have, uh, I changed CD going back a few uh, directories to two dots. <coughs> this takes me one directory up, two more dots, and I'm three, three more dots, and I get three directories, etc. So it becomes quite quick. And you begin to become really productive when you create your own creations, as it were, because you remember them and you've, you've used them. So uh, I can, I have very pretty git logs. So if I do log, ah, Anyway, I won't do it now. But anyway, it all becomes pretty. So that made me move to, uh, I was going to use Manjaro Distro, which is like uh, a very stable uh, version of Arch, which is like the most customizable distribution. And what that means is basically the alternative to Windows or Mac is Linux, and Linux has lots of different flavors. And uh, in the end, I ended up with a normal one, that ever, the safest one that everyone goes for, which is Ubuntu, uh, because it played with the uh, surveillance system of my job. Uh, so they need to be able to break into my computer at any point, and it wasn't supporting Manjaro, but it supported uh, Ubuntu. And then I went for something called KDE Plasma, which is my desktop. And here I can really customize it. So I liked from Windows, 
that bottom element with all the information that I have and uh, a fantastic clip manager, for example. Here I can see everything I've cut and hopefully uh, there's nothing NSFW there. You can see everything is suitable for work. And uh, I can move both forward and backwards while I'm just uh, cutting and pasting with shortcuts, etc. But I also liked the dock from Mac. So now I have my Mac dock for the things that I've got open. And of course this. Now, the thing about KDE is you can really customize it in every possible way. You can have it as it is and it works. But frankly, I, I don't understand people who move to Linux without wanting to tweak. Because the truth is I have found uh, Mac OS and Windows much more reliable. <laughs> they just work off bad there. There's, right? Whereas this, for example, when I started um, to we use three monitors and uh, and it's, it can be temperamental sometimes. And you have, you know, working out uh, the terminals that work for you. But for example, isn't this a nice terminal? It just drops from the top whenever you want it and it goes back. And you can split it and you can multiply it and you can do everything you want and off it goes. Of course, at the moment, I am, it's, it's nice, the novelty is nice, but it kind of takes me away from my IDE. So uh, I'm not sure whether I will use it uh, uh, or not, but I might. I might just extend my sense of my ID to my two screens and have it drop down somewhere or other. But, uh, but there are so many customizations that you can do. So my verdict then to finish is that uh, this is madness. Don't follow me here. You will never <laughs> stop. I was fine before just with my... You know, normal OS, desktop, everything worked fine. Occasionally it didn't. And if I really wanted to customize, I did Windows and I felt like a ninja. Uh, but then, you know, once you start, you just, you just don't stop. So this is, this was basically a public service announcement to tell you what not to do. Uh, secondly, it works, but, uh, every so often it doesn't. So again, it's something I took, a, I took a, a jump because I got, I just moved jobs and they gave me a new computer and said, what do you want? Uh, but I didn't have choice over the computer. So the box is probably the ugliest box in the world, this ThinkPad. Uh, but you can tear it apart and it's really repairable. I don't care about that. I wanted it pretty. I have a lovely XPS 15 at home named Lola. My wife named it Lola, which I felt was an insult because it was much sleeker than a Lola. But there it is. Um, and, but, so here I am. You can make it your own. And to be fair, it's actually been a nice, um, a nice dive into programming. It's also actually made me learn stuff around Bash. It's made me learn around various things. It's been a good motivator and a good sort of when I'm, you know, depressed by the look of my ThinkPad. I get cheered up by the look of my, uh, sort of innards. And I think that's my introduction of uh, very much a noob. If you know any good hacks, any good set of uh, packages, any good plugins, anything I haven't thought about that you know about, please let me know because this one will never end now. Thank you. I have to say, I have two external screens on my Mac in work and um, I've had cases where one will stop working. It, so the um, Mac OS still sees that I've got the two external monitors, but it won't display anything on it. And I have to reboot to, to fix that. Oh, well, that's I, a I, comfort. I had, I, I, yeah, it's, so it's not just you. It happens on Mac OS. That well. makes me feel very happy yeah. because what doesn't happen in Mac OS is that I've created rules that. Uh, allow certain uh, behaviors per screen. So for example, I can make that uh, drop down only appear on the right screen out of the three screens I have, etc. So that's pretty nice, but now I feel less sort of fear of missing out. Yes. So thank you.